Okay, the reason why you want to plane your boards is, I don't know if you can see that, but this is actually bowed a little bit. It bows up on the left. So when you're doing headers, like I'm doing headers that are three, uh, three boards deep here for a uh, two by six wall, uh, they'll get out of whack. And you can see that some of these headers I did before I got the planer here, you can see that sticking out a little bit there. And uh, you can see it sticking out quite a lot right there. That's that's probably a good little over a quarter of an inch. So that makes havoc when you're going to do your other um, like sheeting and drywall and things like that. So when you plane it, you can see that this has taken all the high spots down. There was a course where it didn't plane. So now I've got a nice flat board. The next thing I'm gonna do is once I get the header built, so I'm gonna go my, this is a two by 10. I'll go two by 10, half inch insulation, two by 10, half inch insulation, two by 10. That'll give me a five and a half inch um, header. Next thing I'm gonna do is run it through the table saw to trim the sides down to exactly nine and a half, uh, or excuse me, nine and a quarter. When you're putting three boards together, it's um, very easy to get them off a little bit. And then what happens is that the top part of your header there ends up being just slightly higher than your measurement or slightly usually it's higher because your boards are not flush along the bottom flush along the top so instead of nine and a quarter you may actually end up with nine and three eighths or um you know an extreme even a little bit bigger than that so that eighth inch uh, quarter inch may not seem like that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things but it, it sucks so i'm going to go ahead and build the uh, next header and then run it through um, table saw. It is a little difficult to do three boards at a time. These headers are five, seven, um, and then to run them through that is a little bit cumbersome. I gotta go on one side and flip it and do the other side and then turn it around and do the same thing on the uh, opposite end. And what that does is uh, just make sure I'm exactly at nine and a quarter all the way around. So when I build my wall, my measurements are, are exact, exactly what they need to be. Um, I could do the boards individually, but then when I build it, they may still get off a little bit. So I've just built the headers and they'll do it um, all at the same time.
So we're at nine and a quarter. That's where I want to be. Should be at five seven. Good. Everything's lined up, cut nice and straight now. So now when I get my uh, wall put together, I'm not going to be fighting with that eighth of an inch or quarter inch that's hanging off there. So that's how I started building my headers to get them nice and straight. You can always get um, like an LVL or you know manufactured lumber, and it'll be straight right off the bat. But uh, this is how I've chosen to do this. So I've got several more headers to do, but um, so this way the reason why I'm insulating is I want to have that thermal break. So on here, uh, these are both R3 or 3.5. I can't remember. Um, the wood does have an R value, but it's not a whole lot. Um, I can't remember if it's so much per inch. So anyways, I'm going to have, uh, I think, 7 R value there, and then I'm going to have a 1 inch on the outside when I do my sheeting, which is an R6.5, I believe. So that puts me pretty much almost like an R13, uh, 14 plus the wood. So I'll have a nice extra R value there for the wall. So that, hopefully I'll cut down on the uh, thermal bridging through the headers. So that's it, quick uh, way on how I'm doing my headers.